here we go. Friday night, Knicks. A bunch of disappointed Knicks fans in here tonight. Ah! I wanted this one, fellas, man. I wanted this one, man. This is Post Game Live, number one show for the fans, by the fans. CP from the Knicks Fan TV. My man, JL, is from the Nick of Time Show. If you're a diehard Knicks fan who loves to talk about Knicks news, Knicks rumors, and post-game live analysis featuring live callers, smash that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Special guest in the building from the Knicks Film School, our guy Jonathan Macri in the building. What's up, what's up? I wanted this one. I, I wanted this one so badly, Macri. Talk to me, man. Talk us off the ledge, man. I wanted Please this one do. so I badly, mean, man. I- so badly, hug. man. Yeah, I'm tight. Hug. I'm tight right now, man. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm usually I'm usually pretty good about talking uh the collective fan base off the ledge, but I mean look, it, it's you know, you hate to say this because it's cliche, but it's it's one game in uh it's the second game of the season where like I I I've I probably I will go back to this one a lot, but it's a 15-man roster with nine new players, and the holdovers are all relative kids. And yeah. it's like they got, you know, it. it's like if you're looking for signs of hope, you'll find signs of hope. If you're looking for signs of frustration after a game like tonight, you'll find your signs of frustration, and it will not be hard. I guess where I come at it is that the signs of hope are probably – the the if you were gonna pick the signs of hope that you most want to see, you've been getting those through two yeah. games, and you yep. got it tonight. And the signs of frustration, you know. And I know a lot. Listen, a lot of people accuse me of making excuses, and I probably do make a few too many excuses yeah. a lot of the time. But that being said, things like late game execution to me, that's a that's going to be the hardest thing to come with with a roster full of new guys, yeah. and and yep. particularly guys. Like Julie, like Randall and yeah. Morris, guys who, yeah. who like to engage in one-on-one play. So, I, I mean, JLS, man, uh, the emotions were there from the from the beginning. You know, the first game, enemy territory, battle of the city. The all the storylines were there. Oh, we we God. had a we had a contingent of Knicks fans out there. We had the Knicks flag out there waving loud yep. and proud. We were in the building, heavy. You know, took took it over. Everything was was right for us. Nineteen point deficit, JLS. Chip yeah, away and, and even take the lead, man. It, this was a tough one, man. Give me, yeah. give me some of your takeaways, JLs. This was tough. Jeez, oh, the mad scientist David Fizz there with his, the funky lineups that everybody killed him for kind of worked at the end, but not quite. <laughs> that's 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 what I'm getting from it. Like, we were getting killed, killed with the drill penetration. Yeah, killed the everywhere. Defense. Transition Still defense. Transition defense. We in the paint, getting, we were getting killed everywhere, killed man. Everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. And I know me, you know, people were like, all right, Dennis Smith Jr., he's not playing well. Uh, Elbert Payton needs a blow. Put it in Frank and see what happens. <sighs> That's what everybody's probably thinking. Yeah. What's this do? Leaves Frank on the bench, goes with RJ and Alonzo Trier to start the second half, and they cut into the lead using that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. I, I think, um, you know, just, just going to the closing moments of the game, Macri touched on it. As this is a new team and we have a lot of new players, closing out the games and figuring out who the go-to guy is going to be um, is, is something that we're going to have to learn from. But I just feel like I understand Julius is here and, and he's the number one guy de facto at, yeah. at this moment. I'd, I'd rather live and die with RJ making the plays, man. I can't yeah. go with the constant ISO Julius. He's too turnover prone for it, man. I'd and rather. ISO mode. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't do it, man. I want to live and die with the ball in RJ's hands to make a play or to take it himself, man. I can't go with the ISO Julius, man. Can't do it. You know the thing about the thing about Julius is I, I gotta think both him, well. Marcus Morris, I think it was strictly a money thing. I mean, I know he yeah. talks about Philly and, and this and that, but uh-huh. I mean, look, he looked around. He's like, I got fifteen million over there. I'm gonna go over there. I mean, but that's the funniest part. It's like, yeah, I mean, let's just keep it a buck. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, it is what it is. And look, look, get get yours where you can. Yeah. But you know, with with Randall especially, I, I have to think he would have 
he had other opportunities to go to some other teams. Yeah. And he was told in no uncertain terms. I, I have no doubt that he, that like, look, for the next year to two years, you're going to be the, fe- the focal point of this offense. That's not to say that he can't grow, but I think it all, it's going to have to be a thing where RJ is going to have to earn it. And I know a lot of people hear that and they're like, R- RJ's already earned it. Right. But you know, it, it's, it do, it's not going to happen in, in a week or whatever. It's been a month since this team is, has been together at some point. Um, Julius is going to have to look at, at, at RJ and realize and in, in, internalize like, wow, the best thing for him and me and this team is for me to start deferring more. And that's going to be, you know, listen, you c- blame Fizz if you want, blame whoever you want. That, that is on Julius. Like he has to realize that, yeah. you know, because they, they ain't benching it. I mean, there's one, there's yeah. one, like two guys on this team, they're not benching and he's one of them. So that has to be on him. He needs to realize that he needs to be big enough um, and smart enough to make that decision. And I think at some point he will, um, if things continue. So uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not like apoplectic about that. But I hear you. I hear you, man. I hear you. Yeah, it, it's it's tough. Go ahead, JLS. Go ahead, Wayne. Um, I, I was saying, I was saying in preseason that RJ is going to be the 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 leader by the end of the season. And if we keep doing things like this at the end of the games, I guarantee you it's going to be happening sooner or later than later. I mean, you can partly blame it on Fizz, because, too, because game on the line, I don't want to see Julius Randle posting from the three-point line down. Yeah. <laughs> like, every, if you've seen the clips of Julius Randle on the Pelicans, all his best moments happen when he's on the move. He's it's not actually, a good post up player. Mm-mm. Yeah, he's not. He's like, it's, he's an okay post up player. He, you know what it is? It's his handle. Like, it's more of the handle than the post ups. Like, I, he, he puts butter on his hands before he starts. Yeah, he's, he's got Charles Smith hands. I said that on Twitter, man. He's got Charles Smith hands. It's not good. A little bit. And it's just turnover after turnover. We just yeah. need a, a set at the end of the game. We don't need ISO. We need an actual set. And yeah. I know it's Lando's fault for doing it, but I also. As, as, as I, you got to blame Fizz, give Fizz props for pulling that lineup off and bringing us back in the game, but you also got to blame him for not having a good play to win in the end of the game. In the yeah. I mean, give credit to Fizz. I think the turning point once again came at the seven minute mark, just like it did in the Spurs game where he puts in Ellington. Yeah. Uh, Ellington splashes a three as soon as he gets in there. Randall follows up yep. with a three. Another three by Ellington uh, ties the game. Uh, Kyrie comes down, makes his shot. Another three by Ellington puts us up by one. RJ with a two-pointer puts us up by two. I mean, we, we were there, man. We we had the I game did. in our grasp. Um, and I think, you know, the, the Morris three was ill-advised. Morris, yeah. Morris yes. took a three at – I'm just looking at the, uh, the play-by-play here. Morris took a three at 39 seconds left. Ill, ill-advised three. I didn't think we needed it. And then that's when Kyrie came back and, and hit RJ with step right. back. I mean, what can he do? He's 19. He's a rookie. It's tough. Kyrie was on his money. He's been on his money since since he's got to Brooklyn. That's a tough guard. And that was basically the game, man. That, 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 that was, was basically it. That wasn't even the three that bothered me. The three that bo- the shot that bothered me was the shot he took before that when the Knicks were kind of coming back and then he just went ISO again. Yeah. And flanks it off the – Oh, Mars. Mar- kind of- yeah, he killed the momentum. Yeah. Completely least- killed the momentum on that play. Yeah. At least that three was like open. That yeah. other one, I was like, dog, what are you doing? I like, passed the ball. Yeah. I mean, I love you. I love what he does because he kept us in the game with the Spurs game. But but come on, man. When it, when the game gets tight, you just, just don't go ISO. That's not always the answer, man. It, it hurt us, man. Uh speaking of ISO, credit to Fizz. You know, the, the starting lineup experiment in the last game didn't work. Yeah. Uh, one one of the adjustments that I like that Fizz did, although I thought he should have started the second half, was was putting ISO in, and he gave yeah. us an immediate lift. This game would have been way out of hand if we didn't have the scoring yep. um, from mm-hmm. ISO because our half court offense was abysmal. We didn't get as many uh, transition looks as we did in the Spurs game and, and stuff. I mean, they were literally daring everybody to shoot it. Yep. I, I mean, they were letting Alfred Payton do whatever he wanted. They had no respect for anybody's jumper uh, on that starting unit whatsoever, man. So ISO came in and did his thing and really kept us kept us alive. Work. I gotta say, I you know, oh God, it, he might be the most for me personally the most frustrating player yeah. not to not to figure out on this team because he's not frustrating to figure out at all. He's actually a really easy player to understand his game and what he's good at and what he's not good at. But just in terms of 
if you're an organization that is that is like the Knicks and you're trying to go from being a first one here, a shitty organization to a respectable one, and you have a guy that you got for nothing, you literally mm-hmm. found him on the you found him on the scrap heap. Nobody wanted him, and you got him now. And he could do the things that he, he got to the line, and I know he didn't hit all of them. He got to the line eleven times. Eleven in times. Minutes. That's yeah. That's James Harden it's stuff. It's and, and, and we've seen him do stuff like this before. So you got a guy that could do this stuff. You got a guy that could put your team on his back for stretches of a game, and not in a way that's inefficient. He had he had twenty two points on seven. I yeah. can't even say the yeah. treatment yeah. on seven shots tonight. 22 points on so, seven so shots. You have a guy like that, and, you know, it's like, do like, do you give in? Because he has, obviously, he has negative tendencies. His yeah. defense is, it leaves some to be desired. He occasionally right. is not going to look to pass when you want him to pass. So it's like there's a give and take here, and there's yep. a plus and minus that you have to assess. And I, ju- I don't know what the right answer is there, but, but to, uh, it's just... He has to play. He has to play. He has I, to play. A, the way yeah. we use him today is the way we should be using him. Yeah. Bold, bold predictions. I got two of my bold predictions that coming to coming true. Uh, <laughs> second one, he was going to beat Wayne Ellington out coming off the bench first. Yeah. And Wayne, Wayne well, they should both play. They should both no, play. No, they should both definitely yeah. play. Yeah. yeah. But they yeah. should play exactly how they was used today. When Wayne Ellington, when we need buckets quickly and in a hurry, Wayne Ellington is a microwave. <laughs> yeah. He- well, I well, I think the X factor in that was RJ getting them involved. That's true. We, you know, when R, when they threw in RJ at the point, things settled down. I mean, Macker, you pointed out six steals. Yeah. Was, was excellent for RJ tonight. But when he started running things, things started to happen. And I think the issue I think we're going to have all season long is you're going to have inconsistent play from the three-point guards. Whether it's whether it's Alfred, whether it's Frank, whether it's DSJ, I think I think the problem is just they need like to play to be inconsistent on the floor. And yeah. I don't I at this point, are you really certain that like how do you send Dennis Smith Jr. out on the court? No, nah, D- DSJ is not right, man. He's not right. The jumper, I think I think the jumper alone is killing everything. He looks. He still looks like he's laboring yeah. out there, and he he's came overthinking in and everything. Shot, he, his first two possessions, he was in the game. Yeah, he shot the ball. And first that, two possessions. And that's yeah. what Darren him. That's what Darren him. That, that's what Darren him. And, and he was scared. He was scared of that jumper, man. He had no confidence in that jumper mm-hmm. whatsoever. Um, we. I thought we we should have had Frank in the game early. I thought it got out of hand, especially when our perimeter defense, our transition defense was terrible. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I don't need all four of the bigs playing in a game if the matchup doesn't call for it. I don't need Bobby Portis. <sighs> Out there with Randall and with Morris out there when you know these guys are splashing us from downtown in wow. transition, killing us. I need I need yeah. Frank. I, I'd rather play four on five on offense with Frank trying on defense to try to get some stops because that was part of the problem. Yeah, they pick and rolled us. Bobby Portis couldn't keep up. You saw as soon as Mitch was out, the rim protection was absolutely abysmal. It was terrible. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah. At that point, I was like, uh, Frank, anybody? Can we? Can we get some defense? Can we try? I mean, but to Fizz's credit, we got back in the game. But I would still, I don't know, next game, Celtics, I would go Frank uh, first guard off the bench for five minutes to see if he you, got you, you need that defense. Yeah. I, I and thought then, Frank and Ellington should have gotten more consideration than, than DSA. Well, DSA didn't get much minutes, but Portis's minutes is 10 minutes I would have given to Frank um, mm-hmm. off the rip. Mac, what, what do you think about that? I mean, you know, I, I, I don't. It's so early, and I feel like this is an overreaction. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'll preface this by saying I'm acknowledging this. <laughs> but, but you know, but a few people over the last, I mean, over the course of the game, and even I think before the game, were like, Dennis Smith Jr. should go down to the G League. And I was thinking that. Okay, now go ahead. I no, I, I mean, no, it's, I know it's, it's crazy. I mean, look, the, the Hawks. After they traded for Tim Hardaway Jr., they sent him to the G League for for about half of his third season. Dennis Smith Jr. right now is in his third season. I know it's very different. The optics are incredibly different with him being yeah. the you know the, again mm-hmm. the perceived return from the KP trade. Even though I, I keep talking about it, listen. If we're all being honest with ourselves, they they made the trade for cap space. They made a bet. They lost the bet. They, they lost. It, it. They lost. It, 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 it's done. The yeah. bet is over. They mm-hmm. lost the bet. Whether or not they should have traded KP in the first place is a different story. We don't have to talk about that. Right. But look, they have the kid now. 
perceptions aside, try to do the best. Pretend you he pretend you got him the same way you got Trier. Pretend yeah. you got him as a as an undrafted free agent and act act in the most responsible way to try to reclaim his career because we're we are quickly approaching the point where his career needs a reclamation. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and I, 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 I don't know how crazy is that? I, I have, no, how would he deal with that? Would he basically do the same thing he did right. in Dallas and basically you don't go know how it's going to affect his psyche, man. Don't That's know how it's going to affect his psyche. I don't know either. Um, but he can't, I mean, he can't, he can't play right. Cause he, I, and as bad as bad he's been on offense, he might be worse on defense. He's a turnstile. Yeah. He can't guard it. He's not guarding it's, anybody. It's hard. It was hard to watch, man. It's, it was it's hard to watch, bro. Honestly, it's hard yeah. to watch, man. But, yeah, yeah you know, I, I think I was asking Tommy D about um, how teams are using the G League. Like, I to me, you don't see it that often where, where they send guys down to get work. You, you know what I mean? To, yeah. to to work on their game. I don't really see as, as much teams in, in, in the league doing it um, like they like the Hawks did with, with Tim Hardaway Jr. Yeah. It's because of the stigma, like you said, man. It's because yeah. of the stigma, and we're like, and like JV, like, like Jonathan said, man. Like with with the with the uh, the stigma of the G League. First of all, the way he acted in Dallas. Second of all, I don't even know if the Knicks are definitely gonna do. It. They didn't even send Frank down, so I can't see him <laughs> yeah. send Frank down. <laughs> yeah, like 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 you guys said, man. Optics, man. Optics, but uh, eh, I wanted that. Go- I wanted that one, man. Uh, I wanted it. It, it, was, it was right in our hands, and uh, <sighs> again, you know, learning how to close. It, it's a good lesson for for these yeah. young guys. It's a good lesson for RJ and the younger guys. But as JL said, we ISO's got to get his minutes, and and I need I need the ball in RJ's hand in crunch time. Well, man. one other thing I did want to say, because mm-hmm. and again, he's he's gonna get killed in from all circles. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fisdale, mm-hmm. I mentioned it on Twitter. He didn't. I mean, he didn't put Dennis Smith Jr. back in the game, mm-hmm. which I, I don't think anybody would have done. But you know, Bobby Portis was kind of. He came into the season talking six man of the year. You know, this and that. Um, he was bad in the first half, and I actually, despite the fact that he was bad, I was shocked by the fact that Fisdale did not send him back out there in the second half. Yeah. Pleasantly, I was surprised. I was, I was happy. I was. Happy. I was happy. Oh no! Of course you were happy. Yeah. But yeah. through through a year and two games. It, it feels like Fizz is the type of dude or he's got, maybe I shouldn't even say that he's gotten the reputation as a, as someone who has his guys and he will stick with his guys yeah. through thick and thin. Mm-hmm. And he, they've talked all preseason about, it's not going to be like that anymore. If you do not earn your playing time, you're not going to play. And I think everybody took it with a, with a half a grain of salt, which is like, all right, sure. Ah. The guys that you don't like won't play. Yeah. The guys that you like, they're still going to play. It didn't happen tonight because clearly Portis, I think, is a guy that he, you know, the organization obviously went out and signed for a lot of money. Um, didn't see the court. I was, I was happy about that. Um, you know, how far does that go? Um, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, don't I, know. I, I, I need to see him as a depth piece, not a, not a persistent rotation, a consistent rotation piece. Because, like I said, yeah. sometimes when he's out there with Morris and Julius. On both ends, it's 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 not a good fit, especially when you're going up against the Nets. They're they're running and gunning out there, much more yeah. athletic than we are. Yeah. They're playing small. We need to mm-hmm. match that up. Kev needs those minutes. Yeah, I need Kev five for eight from the field, Jails. I need Kev out there. Kev was playing four for four from downtown. Yeah. Kevin Knox needs those minutes, man. You know what, too, Kevin Knox played. I liked Kevin Knox defense tonight, and he had a couple he absolutely, moments. Yeah, he had a couple he, moments. Yeah, a couple of moments, and you're absolutely right because a lot of the times on those fast breaks, it's not that Morris wasn't trying because you know Morris tries on defense, but he's just not as fast as the Nets front line. So he's looking more like a power forward tonight yes. than a small forward on defense, and that burned us with a lot of those transition baskets and transition threes. Agreed. Knox, actually are not a, a much better matchup in that regard at least for tonight kev was <laughs> solid tonight man solid tonight I, I i love what he gave us in his minutes and um i just wish you know they, they would get him i mean he played 29 minutes still but um you know like i said i, I just hope they they keep kev involved going going forward 